Hey, how's it going? Z Man the Tech here, and I want to thank you for tuning into Good Talk HQ. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Contra Operation Galuga for Nintendo Switch, developed by WayForward and published by Konami slash Konami Digital Entertainment, released February 21st of 2024, and it's also available on PS4 and PS5, Xbox One, Series X and S, and Microsoft Windows. And this is a 2.5D run-and-gun platform shooter reimagined and upgraded for modern gamers to experience Contra either for the first time or like never before. The story, in a brief synopsis, is that a terrorist group by the name of Red Falcon invades and assumes control over the Galuga Islands, located off the coast of New Zealand. And there is an incredible source of power that rests deep within the ruins of the land that, if it were to end up in the wrong hands, it could mean the end of all humanity. After complete loss of communication from the GX Army that was sent for a reconnaissance mission, Earth Marine Corps sent their elite commandos Bill Riser and Lance Bean to investigate and regulate the situation. Now, in this game you'll have to brave eight intensely challenging stages, each with their own intuitive boss fights waiting for you within them. It supports up to two-player co-op in story mode and up to four-player co-op in arcade mode locally. Weapons have an awesome upgrade system to them where if you collect the same power-up of one that you're already equipped with in your active slot, it enhances it to a much stronger version. Each weapon has its own unique overload ability that gives the player a different avenue of strategy to pursue during the onslaught. Some of these include giving the player a temporary shield which can really help during boss fights where they throw a barrage of projectiles at you, and there's another that allows you to return the favor and fire a barrage of missiles at the boss too, just to name a couple. There's also a perk shop that you can spend in-game currency in for perks that you can equip before going into a mission. Some of those perks include adding to the global lies pool, automatically getting level 2 weapon upgrades when you collect any weapon power-up, and the ability to take damage without losing level 2 weapons, just to name a few. There are a whole slew of them, and most proved to be a real asset while navigating through these levels. After completing story mode, the selection of characters that you can choose from in arcade mode increases to about 10 or so three of which have to be purchased in the perk shop. And before anyone asks, yes, the infamous Contra code works with the exception of not having to press start at the end. Two things to note though. The first is that you have to enter it during the opening sequence where the flaming sea shows up. And the second thing is that even though you entered it as a cheat code, it's actually in the form of a perk that has to be purchased with in-game currency in the shop. And it's not cheap. Bit of a grind to get there. Nostalgic that it's in the game, but they do make you work for it. The last tidbit of information that I want to mention in this section is that you get bonus content for having saved data from other Konami games on your system, kind of like how Psycho Mantis from Metal Gear Solid would read your memory card for Castlevania save files. I thought this was an awesome homage and a real treat. So if you have some save files from Contra Anniversary Collection, Contra Rogue Core, Castlevania Anniversary Collection, or the like, there are some awesome bonus soundtracks that will unlock for you. As a side note, the Retro Remix and Way Forward Mix need to be purchased with in-game currency in the perk shop, however the bonus soundtracks that are given through the Konami save files are available to be accessed immediately, and they can all be switched on for arcade mode and challenge mode gameplay. When it comes to the gameplay, let's just say that Way Forward really understood the assignment when it comes to what makes a Contra game, well, a Contra game. The same fast-paced running and gunning, jumping and shooting, and twitch reaction dodging that you remember from the 1980s is all here and executed to precision. That same level of addiction to its commanding gameplay loop is still ever so present, and the added dialogue to the story mode is a nice break in between the chaos. Not to mention it helps give some context to what the heck is going on. As for arcade mode, which is definitely recommended after the completion of story mode, is a full non-stop action war zone one level after the next. Same 8 missions, but omitting the story cutscenes to keep you locked in for a consistent playthrough to see how far you can get with the lives given, tying in more closely to the 1980s classic. 2 through 4 player co-op in this mode is a nice addition, albeit a bit chaotic with all the gunfire on screen, but still an absolute blast nonetheless. The challenge mode is pretty awesome as well with the set criteria for each level, whether it be a speed run, obstacle course, mastery of a weapon, or the like. They all have win and lose conditions along with a par and best time to meet. There's a nice 360 aim mode in the settings that's on by default, though it could be toggled if you prefer it to feel like the aiming in Classic Contra. My preference was to leave it on as I found it more accessible to get that exact precision that I was looking for, but to each his own. It's nice that the option's there. As far as the abilities, some characters have a double jump and others have the ability to hover for a short period of time. Some characters can dash with invincibility frames 
and others have a grappling hook that allows them to ascend towards the ceiling of certain levels to attack from above, giving them an advantage against the enemies that are restricted to the ground. Some characters also have a unique variation to the power-ups that they collect as well, so depending on which characters you use, you'll have to get a feel for them and see which one suits your needs best, when given the option of course. All in all, I have to say that the boss battles are probably the major highlight when it comes to the gameplay though. Once you experience them, you'll be looking forward to them for each mission that you play. As far as the controls, they're tight and responsive with no noticeable input delay or anything of that sort. You can move your character with either the analog stick or the D-pad, jump with B, fire your weapon with Y, use ability 1 with X, ability 2 with A, overload with ZL, lock your movement and free aim with ZR, swap weapons with L or R, and activate the bonus pod with the minus button. The controls pretty much remind me of Contra 3 The Alien Wars and Contra Shattered Soldier for the most part. That's the best that I can provide for a point of reference since those are my most played Contra games. Pretty standard. The controls do what they need to considering this is one of those twitch reaction kind of games, timing is everything, and thankfully this game delivers in the controls department. As far as the visuals, there's an obvious hit to the level of details and textures for the Switch version in comparison to the others, but overall, it's not a bad looking game at all. The character models and backgrounds are decently rendered, and the graphics used for the various types of weapon gunfire looks pretty sick too. The hand-drawn character stills utilized for the dialogue sequences are beautifully crafted, and they fit in adequately with the overall aesthetics. Collectively, the animations are pretty typical for that of a Contra game, and they really do exhibit the qualities of a premium arcade game. They meet expectations for the style of game and genre that it's in. No issues there. The graphics and animations for the explosions are hands down some of my favorites that I've seen in quite some time. When it comes to the sound design, I really appreciate the use of the classic sound effects from previous iterations of the games in the series for menu selections and pausing the game. The sound effects are clean and crisp, and they really do complement the nice visual solidifying that pristine level of immersion. The main soundtrack by Yoko Komiyama and Norihiko Hibino really hits home and nails it with the orchestral classic action film score, accurately placed in the appropriate settings and moments within the game, whether it be in the thick of the action or during serious moments of the story dialogue. Each piece of music matches the occasion accordingly. Speaking of the dialogue, the voice acting in this game is top tier, and the game has an A-list of actors doing what they do best while contributing to this project. I could recognize Steve Bloom's voice anywhere and I'm glad that his likeness is being used in this game as one of the main characters. Definitely one of my favorite voice actors of all time. He portrays Bill Reiser alongside Alejandro Saab as Lance Bean, Angelita Esperanza as Ariana, and Kira Buckland as Lucia, just to name a handful. Kudos to the entire voice acting team for those that I didn't name as well. So, in conclusion, Contra Operation Galuga is very much a worthy addition to the Contra lineup and an impressive reimagining of the 1980s classic that's garnered so much praise over the years. A lot of love and care went into this project and WayForward really knocked it out of the park with this one. The bonus content was a nice treat and the added story was an unexpected icing to the cake that I didn't know I needed. Now I've heard some complaints about it in other reviews but honestly I feel that if they really did have a problem with it they could have just stuck to arcade mode. Granted, playing through the story mode really does unlock a good bit of the content that you can utilize in arcade mode, so you'll really want to take advantage of that to experience all that you can with that mode since that's where you'll be returning to the most once the story's complete. Playing this game with up to four players is a breath of fresh air and a nice addition for this style of a game. Now, of course it would have been nice to be able to do this online, but for what it is, it's still a fun time to be had for sure. Even considering this, the $39.99 price point for what is offered here is still fair enough. And if you're a fan of classic Contra, I highly recommend that you give this game a try. And with that being said, my final score for Contra Operation Galuga is 9 out of 10. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them down below, and we'll answer them to the best of our ability. And if you like what you saw, make sure to hit that like button. It helps out a ton with the algorithm to push our content to others like yourself. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more content like this. Have a good one, take care, and thanks for having me, JP.